accidental relations and of accidental qualities. The contrary doctrine is that an actual entity never changes, and that it is the outcome of whatever can be ascribed to it in the way of quality or relationship. There then remain two alternatives for philosophy, i.a. monistic universe P23J with the illusion of change, and e. a pluralistic universe in which change means the diversities among the actual entities which belong to some one society of a definite type. Section B is We can now, in a preliminary way, summarize some of the agreements and disagreements between the philosophy of organism and the 17th century founders of the modern philosophic and scientific traditions. It is the basis of any realistic philosophy, that in perception there is a disclosure of objectified data, which are known as having a community with the immediate experience for which they are data. This T community, a community of common activity involving mutual implication. This premise is asserted as a primary fact, implicitly assumed in every detail of our organization of life. It is implicitly asserted by Locke in his statement 2, 23, 7, heading TT power, a great part of our complex ideas of 80. Discussions and Applications Substances T. The philosophy of organism extends the Cartesian subjectivism by affirming the ontological principle and by construing it as the definition of actuality. This amounts to the assumption that each actual entity is a locus for the universe. Accordingly Descartes' other statement that every attribute requires a substance, T is merely a special, limited example of this more general principle. Newton, in his treatment of space, transforms potentiality into actual fact, that is to say, into a creature, instead of a datum for creatures. According to the philosophy of organism, the extensive space-time continuum is the fundamental aspect of the limitation laid upon abstract potentiality by the actual world. A more complete rendering of this limited, real, potentiality is the physical field. A new creation has to arise from the actual world as much as from pure potentiality, it arises from the total universe and not solely from its mere abstract elements. It also adds to that universe. Thus, 124J every actual entity springs from that universe which there is for it. Causation is nothing else than one outcome of the principle that every actual entity has to house its actual world. According to Newton, a portion of space cannot move. We have to ask, how this truth, obvious from Newton's point of view, takes shape in the organic theory. Instead of a region of space, we should consider a bit of the physical field. This bit, expressing one way in which the actual world involves the potentiality for a new creation, acquires the unity of an actual entity. The physical field is, in this way, atomized with definite divisions, it becomes a nexus of actualities. Such a quantum i.e., each actual division of the extensive continuum is the primary phase of a creature. This quantum is constituted by its totality of relationships and cannot move. Also the creature cannot have any external adventures, but only the internal adventure of becoming. Its birth is its end. This is a theory of monads but it differs from Leibniz's in that his monads change. In the organic theory, they merely become. 
Each monodic creature is a mode of the process of feeling the world, of housing the world in one unit of complex feeling, in every way determinate. Such a unit is an actual occasion, it is the ultimate creature derivative from the creative process. The term event is used in a more general sense. An event is a nexus of actual occasions interrelated in some determinate fashion in some extensive quantum. It is either a nexus in its formal completeness, or it is an objectified nexus. One actual occasion is a limiting type of event. The most general sense of the meaning of change is the differences between actual occasions in one event. For example, a molecule is a historic root of actual occasions, and such a root is an event. Now the motion of the molecule is nothing else than the differences between the successive occasions of its life history in respect to the extensive quanta from which they arise. 125 and the changes in the molecule are the consequential differences in the actual occasions. The extensive continuum. 81 The organic doctrine is closer to Descartes than to Newton. Also it is close to Spinoza, but Spinoza bases his philosophy upon the monistic sub tilde stance, of which the actual occasions are inferior modes. The philosophy of organism inverts this point of view. As to the direct knowledge of the actual world as a datum for the immediacy of feeling, we first refer to Descartes in meditation I, these hands and this body are mine, also to Hume in his many assertions of the type, we see without eyes. Such statements witness to direct knowledge of the antecedent functioning of the body and sense till the perception. Both agree thought Hume more explicitly that sense till the perception of the contemporary world is accompanied by perception of the witness of the body. It is this witness that makes the body the starting point for our knowledge of the circumambient world. We find here our direct knowledge of causal efficacy. Hume and Descartes in their theory of direct perceptive null till the edge dropped out this witness of the body, and thus confined perception to presentational immediacy. Santayana, in his doctrine of animal faith, practically agrees with Hume and Descartes as to this witness of the actual world, including the body. Santayana also excludes our knowledge of it from givenness. Descartes calls it a certain kind of understanding. Santayana calls it animal faith, provoked by shock, and Hume calls it practice. But we must avoid solipsism of the present moment, include in direct perception something more than presentational immediacy. For the organic theory, the most primitive perception is feeling the body is funk till the teoning. This is a feeling of the world in the past. It is the inheritance of the world as a complex of feeling, namely, it is the feeling of derived feel till the ing. The later, sophisticated perception is feeling the contemporary world. Even this presentational immediacy begins with 126 J cents till the present tilde-tation of the contemporary body. The body, however, is only a peculiarly intimate bit of the world. Just as Descartes said, this body is mine, so he should have said, this actual world is mine. My process of being myself is my origination from my possession of the world. It is obvious that there arise the questions of comparative relevance and of comparative vagueness, which constitute the perspective of the world. For example, the body is that portion of the world where, 
In causal fertilization, there is some distinct separation of regions. There is not, in causal perception, this distinctness for the past world external to the body. We eke out our knowledge by symbolic transference from causal perception to sense presentation and vice versa. Those realists who base themselves upon the notion of substance do not get away from the notion of actual entities which move and change. From the point of view of the philosophy of organism, there is great merit in Newton's immovable receptacles. But for Newton they are eternal. Locke's notion of time hits the mark better. Time is perpetually perished till the end. In the organic philosophy an actual entity has perished when it is. 82. Discussions and Applications complete. The pragmatic use of the actual entity, constituting its static life, lies in the future. The creature perishes and is immortal. The actual entities beyond it can say, to is mine. But the possession imposes confirmation. This conception of an actual entity in the fluent world is little more than an expansion of a sentence in the Timaeus. 90t but that which is conceived by opinion with the help of sensation and without reason is always in a process of becoming and perishing and never really is. Bergson, in his protest against TT spatialization, is only echoing Plato's phrase and never really is. 928a, T. Jowett's translation. Professor A. E. Taylor in his commentary on Plato's Timaeus renders the word O6 tilde by TBE 1 IEF 4 judgment in the place of Jowett's word opinion. Taylor's translation brings out the Platonic influence in Descartes' meditations, namely Plato's O6 tilde A is the Cartesian judicium. Chapter 3 The Order of Nature Section I 127J In this, and in the next chapter, among modern philosophers we are chiefly concerned with Hume and with Kant, and among ancient philosophers with the Timaeus of Plato. These chapters are concerned with the allied problems of order in the universe, of induction, and of Gen underscore arrow truths. The present chapter is wholly concerned with the topic of order. For the organic doctrine the problem of order assumes primary importance. No actual entity can rise beyond what the actual world is a datum from its standpoint its actual world allows it to be. Each such entity arises from a primary phase of the concrescence of objectifications which are in some respect settled, the basis of its experience is given. Now the correlative of order is disorder. There can be no peculiar meaning in the notion of order unless this contrast holds. Apart from it, order must be a synonym for givenness. But order means more than givenness, though it presupposes givenness. T. Disorder is also given. Each actual entity requires a totality of givenness, and each totality of givenness attains its measure of order. Four grounds of order at once emerge. I bet order in the actual world is differentiated from mere givenness by introduction of adaptation for the attainment of an end. E that this end is concerned with the gradations of intensity and the satisfactions of actual entities members of the nexus in whose formal constitutions the nexus 128 i.e. 
antecedent members of the nexus in question is objectified. E. That the heightening of intensity arises from order such that the multiplicity of components in the nexus can enter explicit feeling as contrasts and are not dismissed into negative prehensions as incompatibilities. I.V. That intensity in the formal constitution of a subject superject involves appetition in its objective functioning as superject. Order is a mere generic term. There can only be some definite specific order, not merely order, in the vague. Thus every definite total phase of givenness involves a reference to that specific order, which is its dominant ideal, and involves the specific disorder due to its inclusion of given components which exclude the attainment of the full ideal. The attainment is partial, and thus there is disorder, but there is some attainment. 83. 84. Discussions and Applications And thus there is some order. There is not just one ideal order which all actual entities should attain and fail to attain. In each case there is an ideal peculiar to each particular actual entity and arising from the dominant components in its phase of givenness. This notion of dominance will have to be discussed later in connection with the notion of the systematic character of a cosmic epic and of the subordinate systematic characters of societies included in a cosmic epic. The notion of one ideal arises from the disastrous overmoralization of thought under the influence of fanaticism or pedantry. The notion of a dominant ideal peculiar to each actual entity is platonic. It is notable that no biological science has been able to express itself apart from phraseology which is meaningless unless it refers to ideals proper to the organism in question. This aspect of the universe impressed itself on that great biologist and philosopher, Aristotle. His philosophy led to a wild overstressing of the notion of final caus during the Christian Middle Ages, and then, by a reaction to the correlative overstressing of 129, the notion of efficient causes during the modern scientific period. One task of a sound metaphysics is to exhibit final and efficient causes in their proper relation to each other. The necessity and the difficulty of this task are stressed by Hume in his dialogues concerning natural religion. Thus the notion of order is bound up with the notion of an actual entity as involving an attainment which is a specific satisfaction. This satisfaction is the attainment of something individual to the entity in question. It cannot be construed as a component contributing to its own concrescence. It is the ultimate fact, individual to the entity. The notion of satisfaction is the notion of the entity is concrete, abstracted from the process of concrescence. It is the outcome separated from the process, thereby losing the actuality of the atomic entity, which is both process and outcome. Satisfaction provides the individual element in the composition of the actual entity that element which has led to the definition of substances requiring nothing but itself in order to exist. But the satisfaction is the superject rather than the substance or the subject. It closes up the entity and yet is the superject adding its character to the creativity whereby there is a becoming of entities superseding the one in question. The formal reality of the actuality in question belongs to its process of concrescence and not to its 
satisfaction. This is the sense in which the philosophy of organism interprets Plato's phrase, and never really is, for the superject can only be interpreted in terms of its objective immortality. Satisfaction is a generic term. There are specific differences between the satisfactions of different entities, including gradations of intensity. These specific differences can only be expressed by the analysis of the components in the concrescence out of which the actual entity arises. The intensity of satisfaction is promoted by the order in the phases from which concrescence arises and through which it passes, it is enfeebled by the 130 disorder. The components in the concrescence are thus values, con, the order of nature, 85 tributary to the satisfaction. The concrescence is thus the building up of a determinate satisfaction, which constitutes the completion of the actual togetherness of the discrete components. The process of concrescence terminates with the attainment of a full IIY determinate satisfaction, and the creativity thereby passes over into the given primary phase for the concrescence of other actual entities. This transcendence is thereby established when there is attainment of determinate satisfaction, completing the antecedent entity. Completion is the perishing of immediacy. It never ray I I Y is. T no actual entity can be conscious of its own satisfaction, for such knowledge would be a component in the process and would thereby alter the satisfaction. In respect to the entity in question the satisfaction can only be considered as a creative determination, by which the objectifications of the entity beyond itself are settled. In other words, the satisfaction of an entity can only be discussed in terms of the usefulness of that entity. It is a qualification of creativity. The tone of feeling embodied in this satisfaction passes into the world beyond, by reason of these objectifications. The world is self-creative, and the actual entity is self-creating creature passes into its immortal function of part creator of the transcendent world. In its self-creation the actual entity is guided by its ideal of itself as individual satisfaction and as transcendent creator. The enjoyment of this ideal is the subjective aim, by reason of which the actual entity is a determinate process. This subjective aim is not primarily intellectual, it is the lure for feeling. This lore for feeling is the germ of mind. Here I am using the term, mind, to mean the complex of mental operations involved in the constitution of an actual entity. Mental operations do not necessarily involve consciousness. The concrescence, absorbed 131 in the derived data into immediate privacy, consists in mating the data with ways of feeling provocative of the private synthesis. These subjective ways of feeling are not merely receptive of the data as alien facts, they clothe the dry bones with the flesh of a real being, emotional, purposive, appreciative. The miracle of creation is described in the vision of the prophet Ezekiel, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. When the breath of feeling which creates a new individual fact has an origination not wholly traceable to the mere data. It conforms to the data, in that it feels the data. But the how of feeling, though it is germane to the data, is not fully determined by the data. 
The relevant feeling is not settled as to its inclusions or exclusions of subjective form by the data about which the feeling is concerned. The concrescent process is the elimination of these indeterminations of subjective forms. The quality of feeling has to be definite in respect to the eternal objects with which feeling clothes itself. 1 Ezekiel, XXXVII, Lo, T. 86. Discussions and applications in its self-definition. It is a mode of ingression of eternal objects into the actual occasion. But this self-definition is analyzable into two phases. First, the conceptual ingression of the eternal objects in the double role of being germane to the data and of being potentials for physical feeling. This is the ingression of an eternal object in the role of a conceptual lure for feeling. The second phase is the admission of the lure into the reality of feeling, or its rejection from this reality. The relevance of an eternal object in its role of lure is a fact inherent in the data. In this sense the eternal object is a constituent of the objective lure. But the admission into, or rejection from, reality of conceptual feeling is the originative decision of the actual occasion. In this sense an actual occasion is causa sui. The subjective forms of the Prian 132 signs in one phase of concrescence control the specific integrations of prehensions in later phases of that concrescence. An example of the lure for feeling is given by Hume himself. In the first section of his treatise he lays down the proposition, that all our simple ideas in their first appearance, are derived from simple impressions, which are correspondent to them, and which they exactly represent. It must be remembered that in the organic philosophy the data of objectifications are the nearest analog to Hume's simple impressions. Thus, modifying Hume's principle, the only lure to conceptual feeling is an exact confirmation to the qualities realized in the objectified actualities. But Hume's law, CIT, notes an exception which carries with it the exact principle which has just been laid down, namely, the principle of relevant potentials, unrealized in the datum and yet constituent of an objective lure, by proximity to the datum. The point is that, order, in the actual world introduces a derivative, order, among eternal objects. Hume writes, there is, however, one contradictory phenomenon, which may prove, that it is not absolutely impossible for ideas to go before their correspondent impressions. I believe it will readily be allowed, that the several distinct ideas of colors, which enter by the eyes, or those of sounds, which are conveyed by the hearing, are really different from each other, though, at the same time, resembling. Now, if this be true of different colors, it must be no less so of the different shades of the same color, that each of them produces a distinct idea, independent of the rest. Suppose, Therefore, a person to have enjoyed his sight for 30 years, and to have become perfectly well acquainted with colors of all kinds, excepting one particular shade of blue, for instance, which it never has been his fortune to meet with. Let all the different shades of that color, except that single one, be placed before him, descending gradually from the deepest to the 1331 lightest. It is plain, that he will perceive a blank, where that shade is wanting, and will be sensible that there is a greater distance in that place, that wished the contiguous colors, than in any other. 
Now I ask whether it is possible for him, from his own imagination, to supply this deficiency, and to raise up to himself the idea of that particular shade, though it had never been.